Hello everyone, here we have a 1923 Ford Model T engine that's been cut up and marked up in order to give us a better understanding of how it works. These transmissions aren't like modern gearboxes where the gears can be shifted through sequentially using a shifting lever. Instead, they have clutch, drums, and discs. I don't completely understand how this works, but the gist that I understand is that the drums all turn until the driver pushes one of the three pedals which stops one of the drums from turning, thus engaging low gear, reverse gear, or the brake. In this shot, you can see the hand lever and the three pedals, the pedals being color-coded to the springs on the discs inside the transmission. The lever has three positions, with the emergency brake at the rear, neutral in the middle, and high range in the front. To begin driving, the driver puts the lever in neutral. For reverse, they push the reverse pedal and the car moves in reverse. For low forward range, they push the clutch pedal and the car moves forward. In reverse and low range, the vehicle moves as long as the pedal is depressed. Then for high range, while moving in low range, they move the lever to the high position, then release the clutch pedal. Nothing grindable. Because people were buying these cars that just came out of a horse and buggy. They don't know anything about clutch, brake, shifting patterns. They don't know any of that. So you got to teach them something. So this is forward low, back up, slow. This is high speed. You know, this is the how fast you go. You know, giddy up and whoa. You know? <laughs> On the lower left of the screen, you see the flywheel, the green painted gear. That's the starter gear. The parts that are painted yellow, those are for the magneto, which provides power for the coils. The coils, of course, send high voltage to the spark plugs, which ignite the air-fuel mixture in the cylinders to produce power. Yeah, and your Model A only has one coil. Yeah. He's an individual coil. Yeah. Now, what do, we have? what do we have today? Individual coils again. They sit right on the spark plug. And everybody thinks it's brand new. Here it is in the 20s. Here's a cutaway view with the intake and exhaust. The gold valves are for the intake, and you can see where the air comes in the intake manifold up at the top of the screen. After ignition occurs, uh, the exhaust gases get released through the red valves. And as you can see towards the middle of the screen, there's the uh, exhaust, um, I guess you call it an exhaust pipe, an exhaust manifold um, that's painted red there. Uh, then it ends up going out the exhaust pipe at the rear of the vehicle. And you can see the blue passageways, I believe that that's for coolant. And of course, anything that's painted white is what was cut away to give us a view inside. On the lower right of the screen, you can see the generator, which is used to keep the 6-volt battery charged. And the battery provides two purposes. One of them is to provide power to the coils for spark while starting the vehicle, whether it's by the hand crank or by the electric starter, which was available starting in, I believe, 1919. So him and I and one other guy. Yeah. No water pump. No? No water pump. This works on a principle called thermosiphon. Thermosiphon uh, uh, principle is water will rise in a closed container as it's heat. So the water gets hot, it rises up to the radiator. As it's rising out, Cold water is coming in to take its place. It's just flowing naturally. We do we have it missing, but there is a fan to pull the effort. But there's no pump. The only pump, the only thing a pump does is give you something else you got to fix. So on a side note, as we keep looking at this radiator, I thought it was worth mentioning that the Model T actually uses an oil sling system as opposed to a pump which means that basically the oil gets flung out of the pan up into the internals to keep them lubricated. Um, this can be problematic in that if the engine oil gets too low, uh, there's nothing to sling, and then, oh, that's the starter, by the way. Anyway, if there's not enough oil getting slung, then the engine loses lubrication. And another instance that the engine might lose lubrication is if a funnel that's underneath the transmission uh, that collects oil, if that funnel gets clogged with lint, which is a byproduct of the, uh, the cotton disc linings, if that gets clogged, then it cuts off flow to the front of the engine. So the front of engine might lose lubrication. So 
very important to keep the engine oil at the proper level and to keep that funnel and any kind of strainers clean in the engine. So this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more.